All right. What's the first question there? Start 19. Then the first question. Okay. 18. Who is reading for us? The periodic classification of elements, that is to say, classification of elements in the periodic table is an arrangement in the in what order? A A atomic weights, B isotopic weights. The answer is atomic number, according to Harry Musley. The next question, number two. Consolidated. Oh, yeah, continue now. Next question, number two. Please wait. One liter of what? Molar sulfuric acid class that one liter is for sulfuric acid, so volume of, of acid is one liter, yes or yes, yes. which is in as one dm cube, yes. One liter of what? So, so 2.2 molar, yes. so the concentration there is 2.2 molar, yes, it's poured into a bucket of. Is poured into a bucket containing 10 liters of water. And the yes. The solution, what will be the concentration of the sulfuric acid then? Class, let's go. This I thought this is concentration involving two species. You can see there's only one species mentioned here. So let us go. Now they gave us volume of water to be 10 liters. Yes or yes? 10 bucket of water was added in 10 bucket of water, right? God bless you. This volume here will be the first volume mentioned. This will be the first concentration mentioned. This is the volume of water given. And then my C2 is what I'm looking for. My V2, I am not giving. And I've told you in this kind of situation here, the V2 becomes VW plus V1. I told you once I give volume of water, you will not be giving V2. You have to add it together. So where are they? This plus this, that will give you what? 11 liters. Yes or yes? So using the formula, C2 will be equal to, using the formula, C1V1 equals to C2V2. C2 equals to C1V1 over what? V2. What's the C1? 2.2 times what's the V1? 1. What's the V2? 11. Press it. What do you have for me? I hope our calculators are here. What do you have? 2.2 over 11. 0 0.2 molar. Which option is that? Which option? Option C. Option C. Next question. Next question. Is the above experiment? In the above experiment. That means there's a diagram there. Yeah. Okay. Where is our duster? Okay, sir. Okay, can we see the diagram? Clear? This diagram here? Thank you. Okay, quickly hold it. Solid ammonium chloride. In that diagram, solid ammonium chloride was here, solid NEH4Cl was here, and here we are putting a litmus paper here. Are we together, class? When ammonium chloride is heated, 
You will have two gases, HCl and ammonia. According to Thomas Graham, the speed at which a gas diffuses is inversely proportional to its molar mass. So the heavier your, your mass, the less you diffuse, or the less your speed. Are we together? So which one have a, a left under the mass of this? This is 36.5, yes or yes? Hydrogen is 1 plus 5 and 5. Ammonia is... Uh, nitrogen is 14 plus 3, that's 17. Yes or yes? Therefore, this one will diffuse slowly. This one will diffuse faster. Yes or yes? God bless you. Therefore, this is what we are expected to get here first. So the litmus will turn blue. The litmus we are using here will be a neutral exposure part. Because this acid, acidic gas, this basic gas. So the litmus will turn blue because ammonia will get here first. Thank you. Which option is ammonia there? D, that's the answer. Next question. A correct electrochemical series can be obtained from potassium. Are you giving me options? No. Okay, potassium, sodium, calcium, aluminium, magnesium, zinc, iron, lead. Hydrogen, copper, what's in the word then? Argon, silver, and AU. Yes? Okay, which one do we need to interchange here for we to get the correct electronic, sorry, electrochemical series or reactivity series? Are we good? Where is the duster? I have given you the activity series for metals, which is yes or yes? Yes. <laughs> yes or yes? yes? Okay, class, let's go. So we need to interchange magnesium and what? Aluminium. Are we good? Thank you very much. There is no lead here. No need of put. Sorry, there is no tin here. No need of putting tin. So the only one we're interchanging here is magnesium and aluminium. Are we clear? Yes. Thank you. Next question. A basic postulate of the kinetic theory of gas. Where is our duster? A basic postulate. <laughs> this is the reactive series for metals. This is the one they give us in the question. If you compare it, you see that this one does not follow. You interchange it. Next question. Yes? The basic postulates of the kinetic theory of gas is that the molecules of the gas move in straight lines. Which of these is a basic postulate of kinetic theory of gas? A? Yes? Please be fast. Collision and perfectly elastic. Collision is perfectly elastic. B. Forces of repulsion exist. Forces of repulsion exist. C. C. Forces of repulsion and C, force of repulsion and attraction are in equilibrium. D, D collision are in elastic. Yes? D, the collision are what? In elastic. No, the collision should not be elastic. Because if the collision should be elastic, then a point will come where this. Thank you, sir. A point will come where these gas molecules <laughs> might turn into liquid. Are you following me now? It will be inelastic, meaning that the gas collision does not, there is no loss in energy. Total energy is conserved. Are we clear? God bless you. Yes, next question. So, yeah. No, the answer is collision is elastic. A. They say which of these is the postulate of kinetic theory of gas? And it's not being elastic. the question again. A basic postulate of kinetic theory of, that, of gas. That is to say, which of is that? Please wait, wait, wait. You are missing the question. A basic postulate of the kinetic theory of gas is that the collision is elastic. Do you get it? A basic postulate of kinetic theory of gas is that their collision must be what? Elastic. Do you get it? So the answer is A. Their collision should not 
be inelastic. So collision is inelastic, is not among the postulates of kinetic theory of gas. Are you following what I'm saying? Can I continue? Next question. On which of the following that is um, kinetic theory and gas loss. Okay, sir. No problem, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, next question. First. This question is testing your solubility. So, which of these is the solubility of a gas dependent? Which of these does the solubility of gas depend on? A. Wait. Nature of solvent. B. Nature of solute. Temperature. Pressure. Which of pressure. number four? Pressure. Abi. Yes. Which of these does uh, what's it called? Solubility of gas depend on class. Solubility of gas depends on solvent, temperature, and pressure. It has nothing to do with solute because we're not talking about solid here. Next question. Which of the following statement is Now this question is testing your periodic table. Yes, go ahead. Element in the same what? Period. Have the same number of valence electron. Yes? The valence electron of the element in the same period increase progressively according to the valency of the element in the same period. The valency of valence electron. Which one? Is it valency of valence electron? The electron of elements in the same period increases across the period. Yes? C? Element in the same group have the same number of electron shells. The non-metallic properties of the element tend to decrease Non-metallic property of the element tend to decrease across the period. Tend to decrease across the period. What's B? What's B? Yes. Element valence electron of element in the same period increases progressively. They increase. Yes. Next question. The boiling of fat and aqueous caustic soda is called that. This question is testing you on preparation of soup. That is to say, reactions of fats. Are you following me now? Yes. The next question. Hydrolysis. Esterification. Eh? D as C as acidification. D saponification. Eh? Saponification. That's the correct answer. Saponification, also called alkaline hydrolysis. Continue. Next question. Which of the following types of substance react water with oxygen Okay. Which of the following pair of metal will react for? Sorry. Which of the following pair? We react further with oxygen to give you higher oxides. Yes. A carbon dioxide and water. A carbon dioxide and water. B N O and water. N O and water. C O and carbon dioxide. C O and carbon dioxide. D S O two and N O. S O D S O two and N O. What's the answer there, class? The answer is N O and S O two. Eh? SO and NO. The higher oxide of this is NO2, nitrogen 4 oxide. Higher oxide of this is SO3. What is higher oxide? An oxide in which the element will have a higher oxidation state. A higher oxidation state. Here it is 2, here it is 4, here it is 4, here it is 6. Are we okay? That's a higher oxide. Yes? Next question. In the preparation of oxygen gas by heating K KClO3 in the presence of magnesium oxide, little heat is required. Why? 
Yes. KClO3 is potassium trioxochlorate 5. Potassium trioxochlorate 5. Potassium chlorate. Yes, next one. A lowers the pressure of the reaction. B increases the surface area of the reaction. C increases increasing the rate of the reaction. D D B lowering the energy barrier of the action. The answer is lowering the energy barrier of the reaction. Act, the energy barrier or activation energy. I have described that when I was teaching you thermodynamics. I told you that this is how catalysts act. Abi? Yes. I have described how a catalyst acts for you before. I told you that this reactant here needs this amount of energy for them to get it. And by the time they get it, they cannot change into product. But the catalyst will lower this amount of energy for them. This energy is called the activation energy. The catalyst will lower it like this. So they will just need energy to get to this level, which is not for this amount of energy. That is how the catalyst acts. Eh? MnO2 is magnesium 4 oxide. Magnesium 4 oxide. It is the catalyst for that reaction. And this is what it will do, lower the activation energy for that atom. So the answer is what? D. Read the next question first. Methanoic acid. Methanoic acid mixes with water. This question is testing your separation technique. Methanoic acid mixes with water. Yes or yes? Now, which of these techniques will be adopted to separate metanoic acid and water? Yes, A. A, fractional distillation. B, filtration followed by C, uh, what? Distillation. C, neutralization with sodium hydroxide. Followed by distillation. D, neutralization with sodium hydroxide followed by filtration. The answer to that question is fractional distillation. Thank you, sir. You will be tested on this. You will be tested on this again. Now, listen. Fractional distillation, I explained it before. I said it is used for where you want to separate a mixture of more than one component, more than two components. Now, are you following me? Or only two components that have close boiling point, the same boiling point. The only, the only reason why we are going to use fractional distillation for two components is that they have very close boiling points. Are you following me? But if they have massively different boiling points, we use simple distillation for two species having, are you following what I'm saying? So don't forget, fractional distillation is used for a mixture of more than two components or two components having close boiling point. Read the next question. Huh? The what? Please read the question again. Methanoic acid mixes with water in all proportion and have about the same boiling point as water. Okay, from a mixture of sand, water, and metanoic acid. Okay, sorry. I don't know. God bless you. Class, the water and the metanoic acid will mix together. And so, you're having two components here now, sand and what? And a liquid. Now, how do you separate a solid and a liquid? You use, first, filtration to bring out your sand. Then next is distillation. But we are supposed to use fractional distillation here. What they have there is it distillation or fractional distillation? By distillation. All right. It's all to the fractional distillation since they have closed body point. Read the next question. Are we clear? Please wait. 
a quantity Q of electricity. Yes. Three point six G of what? Yes, yes. Please wait. M one of silver is three point six gram. Yes or yes? God bless you. Yes. What what? What quantity? So now they are asking us what M one of which element is here? Give me the past question. Thank you. Which number is this? Which number are you? Number. You can have body. Twenty eighteen. Number what? A quantity of electricity liberates 3.6 gram of silver from its source. What mass of aluminum would be liberated from its source by the same quantity of electricity? Class, that mass of aluminum there will be the M1 of aluminum. That's what we are looking for. Class, are we together? God bless you. Are we good? Now, there are two parameters we don't have here that we need here. Q1 and Q2. Let us write the equation of discharge for the two metals. We have done this already in electrolysis. So we have silver plus electron to give you silver here. Al3 plus plus 3 electron to give you aluminum here. Yes, yes. Multiply this by 3 so that we have the same quantity of electricity. So here was a Q1 here. 3 times 9 is 500. Please multiply for me quickly. Be fast. No, that's 289,500. Yes or yes? Thank you very much. So that is what I want. Are we together? Eh? Sorry, my dear. That would be about Q2. 289500 colon. Q1 is the Q in the question. And no Q was given in the question. Thank you. Let's go. Now, let's quickly find our PQ. We can only find PQ with what? Silver, because that is one that the parameter is complete. Are we following? Now, what would be the M2 for silver? 3 times 108. That would give us what? Three, two, four, and this one remains twenty-seven gram. Are we together? So the Mo two of silver is three, two, four gram. Let us go. Mo one over Mo two. The Gaussian formula method. Q one over Q two. We are looking for Q two. Yes or yes? Q two will be Mo. Sorry. Mo two Q one over what? Are we together? Somebody is asking over Mo one. Thank you, my dear. So Q1 becomes M1 Q2, Abby. All over what? M2. What's our M1? 3.6. Times what's our Q2? 289,500. All over what's our M2? 324. Fastest finger. Please press for me. Eh? 0.7 columns. That's our what? Q1. Yes or yes? Now let us go. The MO2 of aluminum is 27 gram. Abi? Therefore, using the same formula, the MO1 of aluminum becomes, using the same formula, becomes MO2Q1 over what? Q2. What's our MO2 for aluminum? 27. Times what's our Q1? What's our Q1? 3216.7. All over what's our Q2? 289500. I have pressed for me. What do you have? Who's pressing for me? Five steps finger. 0 0.3 gram. Which option is that? Number 12. Option D. Thank you. Next question. Suitable reagents for the laboratory preparation of nitrogen are. What will be the suitable reagent for the preparation, laboratory preparation of nitrogen? A. Sodium dinitrate 3 and ammonium chloride. B. Sodium trisonitrate 5 and ammonium chloride. C. Sodium chloride and ammonium trisonitrate 5. D. Sodium chloride and ammonium dioxonitrate 3. Are we together? 
Thank you. The answer to that question is sodium nitrite, that is sodium nitrate and ammonium chloride. Class, that is this compound we call ammonium nitrite. Look at this compound. If you look at that compound, it contains two things. This compound contains nitrogen gas, two nitrogen, yes or yes. This compound also contains two H2O. Look at it. Two, I mean, two hydrogen, yeah, one oxygen. The other two hydrogen and the remaining one oxygen, yes or yes. They have been two H2O. So, this is the only thing that will give us that compound. Are you following me now? Sodium carrying this and ammonium from chlorine. Combine them, you have NEH4 NEO2 plus sodium chloride. Are we good to go, class? Then this one will decompose to give you nitrogen gas and water. That is the laboratory production of nitrogen gas. Thank you. The, that, the correct answer there will be A. Sodium does nitrite and ammonium chloride. A. Next question. The number of electrons in the valence shell of an element of atomic number 14 is 14 is 284. Yes or yes? So the valence electron is 4. Next question. Number. One volume of oxygen will remain after reacting 8 centimeter cube, 8 centimeter cube of hydrogen gas with 10 centimeter cube of oxygen gas. Sorry. Sorry. Number 13. Uh, A now. Sodium nitrite and ammonium chloride. Number 14 is 4 D. Number 15. One volume of oxygen will remain. This case one is testing you on limiting an excess reagent. Please pay attention to it now. We have hydrogen and oxygen combining to give you water. If you balance the equation, you have to hear, you have to hear. Yes or yes? Are we good, class? Now let us find out who is in excess here. And find out how much of it excess will remain. Excess hydrogen, excess oxygen. Let's do it. How many hydrogen do they give us there? Care body, care body. Eight. Eight minus. How many oxygen do they give us? Twenty minus. Are we good? Now let me quickly calculate the amount of these elements now. What will I do to add oxygen here now? What will I do to oxygen? Let me find hydrogen. What will I do to add, add this one here to get to multiply the one here by two? Abi, that means my H is equal to two times O two. Are you following me? What will I do to this two here to get this one here divided by two? Abi, that means O two is equal to H two over what two? Thank you. Now what's my O two? Twenty times two. That will give me what? Sorry, what am I doing? 40. That's hydrogen. Abi, God bless you. Let me calculate oxygen now. What's my H? 8. Abi, divided by 2. So my oxygen will be what? 4. Put it here. 20 minus this. That will give you 16 centimeter cube. That's, so oxygen will be in excess, and 16 centimeter cube of oxygen will remain. <laughs> eh? You don't understand this? Uh uh. No, no, understand. No, now, why would you don't? Know, are you sure? My dear, that might be in a separate class, but for now, I need to finish this past question. Very important. Except that we can use apart from this one. Okay, let us go. Am I rubbing on this one? Permission granted. Are we good? Okay, let us go. The number of moles of this is what? Two and one. Yes or yes? God bless you. Now let's find the initial amount. I see table method. That's the one you used to know normally. Abi, God bless you. Initial amount of this was what? Eight. Yeah, no, no, no. 20. Yes or yes? God bless you. Now let's find the change. Let's find the change. Are we good? Are we good? Now let me find oxygen. 8 times 1 divided by 2. Are you following me now? Now let me find hydrogen. Are you following me? 20 times this, 40 divided by this. 40, Abby. 20 times this, 40 divided by this, 40. So you have 40 here. You cannot subtract this. So the equilibrium concentration will be 20 minus this, 16 centimeter cube. Are you okay with this one? Next question. Yeah, no, the SS oxygen that will remain is 60 centimeter cube. That's what the question says. Next question. Number what are we? If one of the following oxide is heated with hydrogen or carbon using a bronzing burner, 
it is not reduced to the metal. Which of this metal will hydrogen not reduce it? Sorry, which of this oxide will hydrogen not be able to reduce? A, lead oxide. B, magnesium oxide. C, copper oxide. D, tin oxide. Class, look at this kind of question. It is an interesting question. Let me give you a simple logic to this question. Okay. Now look at it. They gave us lead oxide. Okay. Next one is what? Magnesium oxide. Copper oxide. And tin oxide. Abi? Class, if you look at the reactivity series, lead is higher than hydrogen, so hydrogen cannot reduce it. Are you following me now? Magnesium is higher than hydrogen, hydrogen cannot reduce it. Tin is higher than hydrogen, hydrogen cannot reduce it. Hydrogen should reduce copper, therefore, that copper oxide is out of the option. Are we together? So we are judging between these three. Now, between these three, which one is the most reactive? Magnesium, yes or yes? That becomes your answer. Magnesium oxide. Are we okay? In the reactive series. Next question. What will be the IU pack name for the compound given? The, we have named this compound before. What will be the IU pack name for we are giving CH into CH3, CH3. The con can give us CH2, CH3. What would I pack for this? Class. Either this or this is a longer chain, yes or yes? Huh? What is the problem? Only. This one is not there. No, this one is here. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's what we have here. Your past question, welcome. Your past question, is it unique? So let's go. So this is one, two, three, four. Yes or yes? So this is two methyl butane. Yes or yes? Next question. An aqueous solution of a meta M gives. Check what about the number what? 18. An aqueous solution of a metal M gives a white precipitate sodium hydroxide, which dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide with aqueous ammonia. The solution of M also gives a white precipitate, which dissolves in excess ammonia. Therefore, the cation is. First of all, let us go. This question is testing on qualitative analysis. Look at it. A. Think two ion. B. Calcium 2 ion. C. Aluminum 3 plus. D. PB. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry, I want to cry. I want to go to the class. Now, this metal, first of all, dissolved from the precipitate to sodium hydroxide and dissolved in excess of it. Are you following me? Calcium 2 ion cannot dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide. So it is out of. This is how it is in excess sodium hydroxide. Excess sodium hydroxide. Excess sodium hydroxide. Because I told you it is what? Amphoteric. Yes, yes. Because they are amphoteric. Should I give you the last last? God bless you. Now, which of these three now will dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia? Because we also use aqueous ammonia at the test. This one cannot dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia because it's not a transition metal. This one cannot dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia. Yeah. Are we together? This one will dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia. So zinc is the answer. I'm not, I'm not know what? It will dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide. It will dissolve in sodium hydroxide first to give you aluminum hydroxide. Then it will now die. The aluminum hydroxide becomes apotheric. will now dissolve in sodium hydroxide again or react with it again to now give you sodium tetrahydroxaluminate 3. Sodium tetrahydroxaluminate 3. Are you following me now? Which is why it is soluble in excess sodium hydroxide. But it cannot dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia. And so it cannot dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia. But zinc will dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia. To give it tetra amazing two ion complex. Are we clear? That's the answer. Next question. In excess ammonia. Yes, because they are not transition metals. Number 19. Transition metals, basically, yes. Because they will form complex with it. 
Copper will do the same because the transition element to give you tetra and copper two ion, a square planar complex. Are you sure it's not above? Next question. What is the concentration of a solution containing two grams of sodium hydroxide in 100 cm solution? They did not tell us the cancer here, but I hope you are paying attention. But the options indicate that the concentration is more per dm cube. Now they gave us mass to be two grams. Yes or yes? Hello, class. Two grams. They gave us volume to be what? 100 cm cube, which is the same thing as what? 0 0.1. DMQ. Are we together? Now let's calculate mass count here straight first of all. Mass count here will be 2 over what? 0 0.1. Please, what will this give me? 20 gram per DMQ. Are we okay? Now let me change this to the molar count if they want me to. What is the formula connecting molar count and mass count? Molar count is equal to mass count over what? Molar mass. What is the mass count there? 20. What is the molar mass of sodium hydroxide? Look at it. 40, Abby. God bless you. So divided by this answer is what? 0 0.5. Which option is that? B. Eh? B. Next question. How many atoms are present? 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 100 centimeters divided by 1,000. Give you 0 0.1 dm cube. Are you clear? Thank you. Next question. How many atoms are present in 6 grams of magnesium? There are many ways to solve this stoichiometry, but I will maintain the method I gave you, the GO formula method. Are we together? Now, let's go. How many, where is it, number what? How many atoms, we are looking for atoms, that atom will be what? Atom 1. That's 6 gram. Now let's find atom 2. Atom 2 will be 6.02 times 10 is for what? 23. M2 will be the most. Abi? Uh, why not you with this documentary? Are we good? Now it will be M2. M2 will be the molar mass of magnesium, which is what? 24 gram. Are we okay? So using the formula, AT1 over AT2 equals. One over M2 geo formula. We have that our AT1. Are you following me? Becomes AT. Sorry, AT times M1 all over what? M2. Are we good? What's our AT2 there? 6.02 times 10 is part 23 times. What's our M1? 6. All over what's our M2? 24. 6 here, 1. 6 here, 4. Yes or yes? Press on the word. Four over this one point, eh? What did you get? Yes, times three is about twenty two. Thirty two, no, is a calculator, it's twenty three, is supposed to give you times twenty three. Th Abby. That's the answer. That's option C. C. Number 21. The radioisotope used in industrial radiography for the rapid shaking of fault in wet and casting is cobalt. Why? Because casting and welding has to do with metal, and that's the only transition metal we have that we can use for that. Are we together? Yes, all of them here are radioactive. All of them are radioactive isotopes. Are we together? God bless you. <coughs> Go together. Beryllium and aluminum have similar property. Why? Number 20, 21. The answer is cobalt. And we are dealing with metals. Let's go. Next one. Number... Number 22. Beryllium, why does beryllium and aluminum have property? This question is testing you on periodic table. Diagonal relationship in periodic table. The reason why they have similar property is because, is because both of them are positioned diagonally to each other. We call that diagonal relationship. The, option, the correct answer is D. Diagonal relationship means a relationship.
one element having its electronic configuration and another element having the electronic configuration. Two n plus one diagonal relationship. Eh? Yeah, diagonal relationship. You say what? Yes, they are metals, of course. They are metals, of course. Are we, are we good? So, beryllium is what? Two, two, yes or yes? Once the valence electron there, any becomes what? Two. So, aluminum will become two, eight, two plus one, three. So, if I tell you, it will be two, one, which element will it exist in relationship with? It will be two, eight, one plus one, two. And that is what? Magnesium. This is what? Lithium. So, lithium and magnesium are also in diagonal what? Relationship. Next question. In the next question, we have any mole of E, this is it, plus any mole of F to give you P mole of G plus Q mole of H. Now, the question say, what will be the equilibrium constant for this reaction? Equilibrium constant is concentration of products multiplied divided by the concentration of by the product of by the concentration of reactants multiplied or concentration raised to the power of their numbers of mole this is it concentration of product is delta g concentration of h yes or yes the power of p their numbers of mole all over let's come to reactant concentration e concentration of f raised to the power of their numbers of mole mole that is it Product of their concentrations raised to the power of their numbers of what? Mole. Concentration of G raised to the power of P. Concentration of H raised to the power of Q. Concentration of E raised to the power of M. Concentration of F raised to the power of N. That is the equilibrium constant. Let's go, let's go. Now, let's go. 24 says, in 24, we have CuO plus 2NH3 to give you Cu plus uh, H2O plus Ne2. Please, I don't need the number. NH3 plus Cl2 to give you HCl plus nitrogen gas displacement reaction. NH3 plus O2. So give me one uh, and uh, Don't run away, please. I love you. Are we together? If you want to run away. The reaction is presented by the equation above. The what? A. Basic property of ammonia. B. Acidic property of ammonia. C. Reduced property of ammonia. And uh, D. Oxidizing property of what? Ammonia. Are we together? God bless you. Let us see. Let me find out. Are we together? Let me find out what happens to the other species so that I will know the kind of ammonia is and the kind of property it is displaying here. Are we all right? Now, chlorine here is zero. Chlorine here is minus one. Yes or yes? Ammonia here is reducing. Is reducing agent. Abi. God bless you. Here now. Oxygen here is zero. Oxygen here is minus two. Reduction. Yes or yes? Ammonia here is also reducing agent. Let's come here. Sorry, let's come here. Copper here is plus two. Copper here is zero. Plus two to zero is reduction. Ammonia here is also reducing agent. So this is describing reducing property of what? What is that? Thank you. Next question. The salt that reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid to produce a pungent smell gas, which decolorizes as the potassium permanganate solution is dash. Which of these salt will react with dilute hydrochloric acid and produce a gas that will decolorize KM4? And the salt they gave us there are Na2SO4 Na2SO3 Na2S, Na2, Na2CO3. Let's go. In qualitative analysis, there are two methods to make a salt to release gas. Are you following me now? Sorry, three methods. Three methods. The first method is to heat it. If it does not release gas, we add dilute hydrochloric acid. If adding dilute hydrochloric acid does not, we will give it concentrated sulfuric acid. It does not burn away when we release gas. 
Are you following us? If that gas fails to release gas after these three things, the name of the anion that is there is this. So this cannot be the answer. Because this is the only of the gas, SO2. This is of the gas, hydrogen sulfide. Are you following me? And this of the gas, CO2. Are you following me? If I ask it to them, which of them will decolorize bromine? Sorry, will decolorize KMNO4? This one cannot decolorize KMNO4. Are you following me now? Come on, further, it only turn line water, Mickey. That's the test. These are the two that will decolorize KMNO4. Now, which of them will be the correct answer? This one will decolorize KMNO4 with the production of a yellow deposit of sulfur. But this one will decolorize KMNO4 with that production of yellow deposit. And there's no indication of yellow deposit here. So the answer is what? B. Next question. The refreshing and characteristic test of soda water and other soft drink is as a result of the presence of dash in them. What makes your soda water and soft drink to have sweet taste, it is the calcite infused in it. Are we together? <laughs> so the answer is what? A. Next question. Which of the following is a mixture? So give me that. That mixture. Um, uh, 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 uh. I have forgotten myself here. I am carrying away. I am carrying my girl away. Rubber. Latex. Number three. Number three is what? Volcanizer solution. Rubber, latex, petroleum, and this. Carbon what? Class, let's go. Not an nervous. Are we together? Now, class, a mixture can be separated and they don't have chemical formulas. A mixture can be separated and they don't have what? That's how we know mixtures. Class, are we together? Petroleum can be separated, fractional distillation, therefore it is a what? A mixture. Rubber latex is a mixture of, uh, what's it? Is no, it's a mixture of yes, rubber and water. Please, are you following me now? A mixture of what? Rubber and water. Also, to say, let us say it is a mixture of two. Are we together, class? Yeah. It's a two, one, three, butadiene. Are you getting me now? Two, one, two, butadiene and water solution. So, it is a mixture also. Then, vulcanizer solution is a mixture of sulfur and an organic compound. Are you following me now? Probably a rubber that I want to I want to add in. Now this can be separated using acetic acid. Vulcanizer solution is a mixture of sulfur and are we together that I want to I want to make the rubber more hard. Then I will add sulfur to cause cross link to make it harder. That is vulcanizer solution. Then carbon two sulfide is an organic one. We can see that. Yes or yes? So this one is not a mixture. The answer is one, two, three. Which one is that? They don't have chemical formula or they have chemical formula and they can be separated but if they have chemical formula it means they combine the chemical and they cannot easily separate them instead of the ionic compound that you can use electrolysis to separate next question <clears throat> number what a balanced chemical equation obeys which law the law of conservation of mass the law of conservation of mass says that total the reactant will be because of the mass of what product and that will only be achieved if the equation is what Number 30, 29. A given amount of gas occupies 10 dm cube at 4 atm and 273 degrees Celsius. What will be the number of moles of the gas present? What will be the number of moles of the gas present? This question is testing you on. Eh? I did gas equation, yes. It's testing you on a gas equation in gas law. That is to say, a general gas equation. A general gas equation where only one parameter for pressure, temperature, and volume is given. So the formula you're using there is PV is equal to any ROT. Number of moles becomes PV over what? ROT. Are we good? Okay, let us go. So let's go. Now we are giving that. Um, 10 dm cube 
they give me. Are we good? Now, what's the pressure given there? 4 ATM times what's the volume? 10 DM cube over. Let's go. What's the temperature there? Please make sure that in solving anything in gas law, please. Lesson number one, your temperature must be Kevin. Temperature must be what? 273 degrees Celsius. Add it to 273. That will give you C four six. Yes or yes? Sorry, 546. It becomes 546 times 8.32. Your R, your molar gas constant is 8.32 in this case. Class, I will take that. I'll multiply for me. Multiply, multiply quickly. What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? Yes. Zero point zero one nine. Eh? Now they get different answers. What is the word now? Mola, you don't need that one. You don't need it. You don't need it. Continue. Yes. You don't need it because you are trying to find number. You mention number of mole here. I didn't mean you not mention number of mole here. You have to be general gas. Equation. I didn't mean you, there is nothing like mole. They didn't give you mole, or you are not looking for mole. Are you following me? Then that molar gas, that molar gas volume they gave you that test it means that that will be one of your V. Are you following me now? Sorry, that will be your V two. You can take it as a V2 or V1. Then you now use standard temperature as T1. Standard pressure as P1. Do you understand, class? Are you following me, class? Molar DM cube. If there was no number of mole here, mole now because they use this formula. Same mole over there. Are you following me now? Then you can take this one as your number one. This one as your number two. Or you take this one as your number one. This one as your number two. So let me assume I'm taking this one as my number one. Then your T1 here will be 273 Kelvin. P1 here will be 760 millimeter. Sorry, which millimeter look at? What's the pressure there? ATM. ATM. That will be 101 times 10 is to the power 5 ATM. Are we good? And then you take your V1 to be 22.4 dm cube. Then these ones that are giving you number two. Solve it. Yes, yeah, general gas equation. Are you clear? Are you clear? Next question. Yes, what did you obtain? What did you get? Four times ten. Eight points. Eight times ten is minus three. Eight point zero zero nine. Yes or yes? Zero point eight nine. The answer is A then. Are we together, class? Are we good? The answer is A. The answer is A. He said, yes, the answer is A. Now they converted this to DM cube, to CM cube. Which is times 1000. If you do that here now, you will now obtain. Are you following me now? 8 point this times this will give you times 1000. What will it give you? That should give you 8.9, not 0 0.89. So the answer is 0 0.89. Are we together? The marker. Okay. Please use everything with this quickly. Are we together, class? Now let us go, let us go. Now, number 30, according to Charles' law, the volume of a gas becomes zero at what degree Celsius? According to Charles' law, eh? Who is feeling it for me now? The answer is minus 273 degrees Celsius. If you are using degrees Celsius, 
Then at zero, you will still have a particular volume. Are you following me now? Yeah. It is at minus 273 degrees Celsius, becomes zero. That is why you will have a broken line here upwards. Are we together? There is what we call absolute temperature. Absolute temperature is called zero Kelvin. That absolute temperature, zero Kelvin, means a te are you following me now? Means the temperature that the volume of the gas is expected is zero. Why did we call it absolute temperature? Because degrees in case of degrees, the temperature will not the volume will not be zero. So we begin to take Kelvin temperature as a start, zero Kelvin. Now, if you convert Kelvin, zero Kelvin to degrees Celsius, remember that degrees Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus two seventy three. So degree Celsius will now be Kelvin minus two. What's the Kelvin here? Zero. Minus two seventy three. Degree Celsius becomes minus two seventy three. Next question. Number. Number thirty one. A substance that is used as a ripening agent for fruit is. <laughs> the sulfide. Are we together? Uh, oh God, you guys just amusing. The way you mentioned it in unison, you know, it's in three D. God bless. Thank you. Now, which of these sulfide? The sulfide. Which of these sulfide will be soluble in dilute hydrochloric acid? A. Iron sulfide. B. Copper sulfide. C. Zinc sulfide. D. Sodium sulfide. Are you following me now? The answer is sodium sulfide. Why? Because that's contain the most reactive metal. So. Are you following me now? They cannot easily be decomp. Are we together, class? Let us go. Are we good? Now, what what is the pH of zero point zero one mole per dm cube solution of sodium hydroxide? They gave us sodium hydroxide concentration to be zero point. I ought to put a four corner bracket there to mean concentration. They gave us what? 0 0.001 mole per dm cube for sodium hydroxide. Now I'm going to find concentration of sodium hydroxide first, of hydroxide ion. This is sodium ion plus minus. Are you following me now? This one is 0 0.001 molar. 10 watts. Okay. 0 0.001 molar. Are we together? So I've got my OH concentration. Now, I will find POH first before I will get my pH. POH is negative log to the stem of OH concentration, which is negative log to the stem of 0 0.001. Press for me. One, two, three. So the answer should be what? Three. Press it, you will get it. Minus log of 0 0.001. No, it's three. That's minus log. Are we together? Now, I connect, I want to convert POH now into pH. I will use this formula. Now, my pH will now be equal to 14 minus POH. What's my POH? 3. That will give you what? 12 point. What are you doing? That will give you what? 11. So the pH is what? 11. Which option is that? Next question. The type of bonding in copper, I mean copper two ion is now wow. Now I keep pressing. What is the word now? What kind of bonding do you see in tetra, I mean copper two ion? This is the complex I was telling you that uh, this man will form when it combines with the ammonia. Class, the kind of bonding that takes place here is coordinate covalent bonding. Now listen to me. I have, have I discussed bonding here with you? No. no. Now listen to me. If you check the two elements in a compound, if any of them can lose electron, you don't have to know whether they can lose electron, Abi. They are two numbers. You write the electronic configuration, Gauzier rule. If any of them can lose electron, ionic or electrovalent bond. If one of them can lose electron, that is two of them will gain, gain. That is covalent bonding. It is between two non-metals that can, no, no one can lose electron. So the shear. Are you following me now? That's how to identify bonded. Now, if a compound carries a charge, that kind of compound is formed by coordinate covalent bonding. What actually happens here is one of the species that does not have electron to contribute to the bonding, the positive charge. So the other species contributed the electron that they shared. Are you following me now? And then, so the overall compound will have a charge that this one is coming with. 
And uh, apart from this, another example is NEH42+. plus. You know, are you following what I'm saying? Hydrogen does not have electron. It wants to bond it. So nitrogen will not donate all the electron that both of them wish. And that will give you F plus. So this is what? Coordinate covalent bonding. One of the atoms donate all the electron shared between the participating species. Another example of this, apart from this, is AO, oxonium ion or hydronium ion plus. Take note, all this is covalent bonding. Next one. Which of the following is an example of a chemical change? That is to say, which of this is an example of chemical reaction? A. The solution of salt in water. Class, is it chemical? Of iron, is it chemical? Yes. yes. Therefore, that is it. Number 36. To what temperature must a gas at 270 be heated in order to double both its volume and pressure? Class, let's go. This question testing us on gas law. I don't, I, I don't know if you are following what I'm saying, class. They gave us an initial temperature. The first temperature here, for what again? Yes. 36, thank you. The first temperature mentioned is what? 273 Kelvin. Yes or yes? Are we together? Yes, sir. They did not give us pressure. They did not give volume. Yes or yes? So let me take the first pressure that is mentioned to be P. The first volume that is mentioned to be what? V. Are we together? Now they say, what will, temperature, what will be the temperature? That's all we're looking for. When this pressure and volume are what? Doubled. Is that what you're seeing in the question? God bless you. So therefore, my final... What are we doing? V1 is V. So, if, so my final pressure will be this one, double that be. That is 2P. My final volume will be this one, double that be. 2V. Now we use the general gas equation. Class, if you are giving a question in, I don't know whether it is boy's law or child's law, just by yourself. Are you following me? Are you getting me now? <laughs> Anyone that they gave you only one for it, that means that the initial will be that value, the final will be that same value. Because they don't give you that value. Are you following me? This is formula and get your answer. Let us go. What are we looking for, class? T2. So my T2 becomes V2. T1 all over P1, V1. What's my P2 here? 2P. What's my V2 here? 2. What's my T1 here? 273. What's my P1 here? P. What's my V? P cancel P. Four times this. Four times 273. 1090D. According to the kinetic theory, an increase in temperature causes kinetic energy of particle to dash. What will, according to kinetic theory, what will happen if I increase the, if I increase the kinetic energy? Sorry. What will happen if I increase the temperature? What will happen to kinetic energy if I increase the temperature? A, decrease. B, increase. Increase. An element in the production of matches is... God bless you. Are you getting me? And that smell you're hearing here is the smell of sulfur oxide. The outside of it. Are you following me? They have mushy smell. Pogent, irritating mushy smell that can decolorize. Yes, it has pogent smell, but this one has pogent smell of mushes or burning tire. But ammonia has pogent smell of urine. Take note of this division and decrepancies and discrepancies uh, between them. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, my brother. No, your urine contains urea, not, al not ammonia. <laughs> it, doesn't... it contains urea, basically. Urea. It smells like urine, like ammonia. Which one? Urea? No, urea is the first member of amide. It's NEH2. NEH2CO. Remember it? Are you following me? That's the first main member of that's amino amide, yes? That's yeah, that's urea. No, this is NH2 C O N H. This is the amide, methanamide. Amino methanamide. Yes, next question is what? 38. 39. Abi? Which are the following may not be dried with concentration of phosphoric acid? Ammonia. 
I thought we've done it here. Acid and base. Okay. Only ammonia cannot be grabbed with sulfuric acid because they have to combine with sulfuric acid and give you ammonium sulfate. Okay, let me give another explanation. Ammonia cannot be grabbed by sulfuric acid because ammonia is the only basic gas we have. And this is an acid neutralization. Are you following me? Next question. The last question for this. The conservative method is defined by what? By what? If you look at the option here, you must not, sorry, on time. <clears throat> now let's go to 29. If so far that I maintain, I release simultaneously at the opposite. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's what I'm. Yes, I'm going to be sorry. But I need to, you see, by 10.30 or 10.40. Are you sure? I should not be fast. How then? Are you sure it's going to be anywhere I stop? I was giving a mandate. I'm working on that instruction. I hope you know that. You guys. Eh? He said? No, it's privately. It's privately. It's official. You follow me on right? Okay, sorry. Okay. Are we good? We are not true. Are we true? Wait, wait. Let's see. Are you? Another year. This one is. We are wasting time. After, after I came back, I have come back. Then I come back. Eh? I'll, you know, you know, as it's going on, I know as they go. I'll come back. Let's go, class. If sulfur four oxide, SO2, and methane are released simultaneously at the same time at the opposite end of narrow tube, the rate of diffusion, RSO2, and the rate aren't there, but I'm writing this. CH4 will be in the ratio of dash. What will be the ratio of the rate of diffusions? Are we following class? Now let's go. What's the molar mass? What's the molar mass of SO2? Sulfur is 32. Oxygen is 32. Yes or yes? That is giving you what? 64 gram. Now let's go to molar mass of CH4. Carbon is 12 plus 4. That is giving you what? 16. Yes or yes? Now, according to Thomas Graham's law of diffusion, take it down now. Rate of diffusion of two gases like this is inversely proportional to the square root of their molar mass. Sorry. To the square root of their molar mass. So you are going to be obtaining this. This one is not directly proportional to its molar mass, but inverse. Are you following now? God bless you. What are we looking for there? The ratio of this to this. Abby? Now, let's go. Square root of what is methane's mass? 16. Abby? What is SO2's mass? 64. Square root of this will give you what? 4 ratio. Square root of this will give you what? 8. Or you divide. You have 1 ratio 2. Which option is that? 1 ratio 2. That's it. Next question. 2019. Oh, sorry. We are on to 2019 now. We just did number one. Number two, we are giving this. We are giving R226 88 RN86 X plus alpha particle. What is the value of X in the nuclear reaction above? Class, let us go. First of all, what is what is the nuclide for? Can I write about this? Yes, what is the value for X in this equation? Now, class, alpha particle is helium nucleus. Are we okay? Beta particle is electron, which is no mass but minus one atomic number. Are we together? Neutron particle is a mass of one and no atomic number. This is neutron particle. Take note of these particles. 
proton particle is one atomic number, one mass number. Take note of this. So I'm replacing this simplicity. We have H E here, we have four here, we have two. Now, more class, the rule here is this. In a nuclear reaction, total mass number of reactants must equal to total mass number of products. And total atomic number of reactants must equal to total atomic number of what? Product. Total left must equal to total right. That's what I'm talking about. Class, are we good to go? Yeah. So therefore, we have 226 two, must equal to x plus what? Four. So x will be equal to 226 two, minus what? What would that give you? 222. Two. Which one is that? What? Eh? Are you not getting it? If I don't rush, we cannot finish this thing. We'll be wasting time. Eh? <laughs> Are we good to go? Number three. The decolorization of the purple color of tetraosomanganate 7 is a test for is a test for A, Akin, B, Akanos, C, Akana, D, Akins. The answer is what? Akin. Four. The gas obtained as a byproduct of anaerobic action on organic matter buried in the earth is A, ethene, B, methane, C, carbon dioxide, D, nitrogen dioxide. Methane. I'm coming. Hello, guys. Now, look at this. Thank you, sir. Okay. It is methane because buried in the air it will amount to incomplete oxidation of the carbon and hydrogen to carbon further than water. So, are you following me now? Therefore, you are going to be having methane left. Are you getting me now? Organic compound left. Are we clear? Due to incomplete oxidation being buried in the air. Are we okay? Now, next question. <clears throat> the okay, number five. What is the basicity of CH3COOH? CH3COOH. I've told you this is the acid there. What's the hydrogen? How many hydrogen do we have here? One. Therefore, the basicity is what? One. All of that's the basicity of one. Because all organic acids are COOH and H. It's just one H is what they have. Basicity of one. Next question. The mixture of gas used in photographic flash tube is. Which of the um, gases we use in photographic photographers' flash tube? Sorry. Now, A, argon and krypton. B, krypton and xenon. C, okay, helium and argon. D, argon and xenon. The correct answer there is krypton and xenon. Why? Because they are below the reactivity series and they are the most reactive of all the, what's it called? They are the most reactive of the red gases. Are you following me? Do you know the reactivity series? In the, in the group. They are most reactive and so we could use them. Are you following what I'm saying? God bless you. Now let's go. Number... We are giving a periodic table. We are giving a periodic table. Something somewhat resembling this. We are giving this kind of table. Well, we have here to be... This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So are we together? This is one, two. Now this is I. This is G three. This is this one is X. This M twelve. This five. This is R thirteen. This is six. 
This is 14. This is 7. This is 15. This is J8. This is T16. This is E9. This is 17. This is L2. This is 10. This is what? 18. Class. Some of them, they gave us the symbol together with the atomic number. Some, they just gave us the atomic number like that. Are we together? Which of the letters indicate an alkali metal and a noble gas? Which of these will give you a metal, an alkali metal and a noble gas? God bless you. This one is an alkali metal. G. Abi? Yeah. The letters we have here are all these. L is 2. G is 2, 1. Let's go. J is 2, 6. E is 2, 7. Yes or yes? M is 2, 8, 2. R is 2, 8, 3. C is 2, 8, 6. Which of these will give you Buddhas? An alkali metals and a noble gas. There's an error there. So surely we have this to be the alkali metal. G R B. Now what are the options having G D? The options having G D are B and B and what? And D. Class, let's go. In the case of B, in the case of option B, we have G and what? E. Is E a color meta? No. Therefore, the answer will be what? D. D is having G and I. So I presume the answer will be I because we are not giving the atomic number for I. Eh? L. No. L is a noble gas. Sorry. That, uh, thank you, my dear. G and L. This is I, the same group with G, group one. Don't mind me. Are we together? So the answer is what? G and F. Are we good? Next question. Which letter represents a non-metal that is a solid at room temperature? That's how we good. Which of these represents a metal that is solid, a non-metal that is solid at room temperature? Class, are we good to go? That is solid at room temperature. We all know that this is 2,6. Abi, that is oxygen. Oxygen is a gas. God bless you. Now, this is 2,7. Fluorine is a gas. We all know that uh, T is what? 2,8,6. That is sulfur. Sulfur can be a solid. Sulfur powder. The answer is T. Next question. Are we good? Are we together? Number nine. An anhydride is an oxide of a non-metal. Which A? An anhydride is an oxide of a non-metal. A. Which will not dissolve in water. B. Whose solution in water has a pH greater than 7. C. Whose solution in water has a pH greater than 7. D. Whose solution in water has a pH of 7. Anhydride. Anhydride means an oxide that will dissolve in water to give you acid. Anhydride will dissolve in water to give you acid. That is pH less than 7. That's the answer. Are we clear? Next question. Are we together? Now, next one. What is the percentage the mass of oxygen in aluminum sulfate? Have you done it? Aluminum sulfate. Aluminum sulfate is Al2SO43. Yes or yes? Let's find the mass of aluminum sulfate. Are we together? Any problem? Okay. If you open the bracket here, you have Al2, S3, O4. Yes or yes? Aluminum here is 54. Plus sulfur here is 3 times 32. 96. Yes or yes? 4 times this will give you 64. Please add everything for me. Eh? 214. Thank you so much. Now, percentage of oxygen will be equal to mass of oxygen over mass of Al2SO4 times 100 over 1. Class, what is the mass of oxygen here? 64 over 214 times 100 over 1. Press me. What do you have? 
29.9. That's option what? Sorry, we made a mistake. Sorry, no, 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 no. Three times four is 12. We did not do that. Are we together? Let's go. So this is 54 plus 96. Yes or yes? Plus 12 times, uh, what's it called? 12 times 16, what will it give you? 72. God bless you. 192. Please, help our destiny. Add everything for me. What do you have? 3, 4, 2. God bless you. So, this will be mass of oxygen over mass of Al2SO4 times 100 over 1. Yes? The what? Okay. Thank you, my dear. There is 2H2O there. That is aluminum tetrahydrate 6 di Hydrate 2H2O. This will give you 36. Water is 18 times 2. 36. Class, are we okay? God bless you. This one is Al2 S3O12. And this one gives us what? 342. Yes or yes? Add it together. What do we get in total? 342 plus 36. 378. God bless you so much for that discovery. Otherwise, we'll keep on ligmaroni, you know, M of Al2S4 dihydrate times 100 over 1. What's the mass of oxygen there? Hey, wait. Oh. Mass of oxygen here is what? Please wait. Oh. Please wait. Here, yeah, this is 4 plus 2 times 16, 32. Abi, that was what gave us 36, yes or yes? So, oxygen here is 32. 32 plus, here we got what? 192. 192 plus 32? 224. All over 378 times 100 over 1. Are you pressing for me? Eh? 59.25. Thank you. Which option is that? Thank you so much. Next question. The hydrocarbon used in the production of styrene, styrene, styrene. Which hydrocarbon do we use in the production of styrene? Eh? Styrene, styrene, styrene. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm doing others. Are we together? I cannot find my boss. Are we together? Okay. Can I off now? Styrene. Styrene is a polymer of this compound. This is styrene. Sorry. What did I say? Styrene. This is styrene. A polymer of vinyl benzene. A polymer of vinyl benzene. The high pack name is phenyl ethene or one phenyl ethene. This is phenyl. Phenyl ethene. Are we together? Are we with class? Phenyl ethene. Which option is that? Ethene, no? Propyne, man. C eighteen imban, D eighteen imbano. The answer is not there. I'm sorry. Yes, eighteen a time on polymerization will give you benzene. Benzene. Abi will give you benzene. Are you good? Well, I've given you polymerization of a time here before now. That three a time when polymerized will give you C C A C. Abi. Which is benzene. Uh -huh. Now, polymerization of 18 will give you polyethene. <coughs> Are we together? Polyethene. <coughs> so the answer is not there. That is supposed to be phenyl ethene, not ethene. Let's go. 11. Sorry, 12. Which of the following contains two amphoteric oxides? In our in the previous past question we solved on Wednesday, give you ammonium. Uh, sorry, I gave you some amphoteric oxide. Yes or yes? So which of them here contains two amphoteric oxides? Hey, 
sodium oxide, zinc oxide, magnesium oxide. B, aluminum oxide, calcium oxide, zinc oxide. C, potassium oxide, lithium oxide, carbon dioxide. D, silver oxide, lead oxide, sodium oxide. The correct answer there is B, aluminum oxide, lithium oxide, and zinc oxide. Aluminum oxide, calcium oxide, and zinc oxide. That's B. That's the correct answer. Aluminum oxide here is amphoteric. Zinc oxide here is what? Amphoteric. I gave you in the last class now. I gave you in the last class. When they, when they, they asked in the question, zinc oxide is dash. And I gave you other amphoteric oxide. It's not an amphoteric oxide. Zinc oxide. Aluminum oxide. Alumina. Tin oxide, lead oxide, all these are the amphoteric oxide we have. Hmm? Hmm? Good morning, ma'am. Okay, you can see him. Welcome, ma'am. Next question. What number are we? Number 13. Number 13. Local black soap is made by boiling palm oil with liquid extract of. How can we make local black oil? Local black soap, sorry, is made by boiling palm oil with liquid extract of ash. Full stop. The function of the ash is to dash. A. Kakuya, A. Sorry. The function of the ash is to provide the dash. A, acid. B, ester of alkanic acid. C, alkali. D, alkanol. The correct answer there is alkali. Remember that soap are made by reaction of, reaction of oils or fats and, cost, and the base, yes or yes, and an alkali, yes or yes. Therefore, the ash here is serving as the source of the word, the alkali. Are we together? Saponification. Number 14. Which? Eh? Can we go? Which of the following substance is not a homogeneous mixture? Homogeneous, are we together? Which of this here is not a homogeneous mixture? A, filtered seawater. B, soft drink. C, flood water. D, writing ink. Eh? Flood water. Thank you very much. Are we okay? Welcome, my dear. Number 15. Remember, flood water will contain fractions of sand in it. And because it contains fractions of sand in it, you're going to be having two phase or two state of matter there. Solid and what? Liquid. That is a heterogeneous mixture. Are we okay? Now, let's go to number 15. In the diagram, we are giving a diagram in number 15. We are giving a diagram like this, a round bottom flag that is inverted, held by a clamp, a retort stand, I mean to say, and then this one is caught and then connected by a capillary tube, okay, to a gas collector here, a gas collector containing, you know, you know, you know, and then a syringe here. Are we okay? They say the gas here is ammonia. And then this is calcium oxide. CAO. And then, sorry, we're having this here. And then this is heat. This is not liquid, it is solid. Heat. And then here is class. Let us go. In the diagram above, why is a mixture of dash? A. Calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. B. Calcium hydroxide and sodium chloride. C. Sodium chloride and ammonia transnitrate 5. D. Sodium and ammonium chloride. Which of them is the correct answer? A. Calcium hydroxide 
and ammonium chloride. That is your Y, yes? That's what your Y is, is it not so? Or calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. Calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. chloride and life. Okay, sorry. This is what was labeled as Y. This was labeled as Y. Are we together? Okay. Class, let's go. So, what to make up Y? What will I hit here? What will I hit here that will give me ammonia here? That is the Y. Class, are we together? A says, where is it again? Number what? Number 16. 15. A says, calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. Yes, that's the correct answer. Calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. Class, there are some neutralization, there are some neutralization reaction where the acid will be containing a gas. And there are some where it is the base that will be carrying a gas. At the end of the day, that base will react with the acid there, but it will re release that gas. Are you following me now? That means they're going to be having salt and water together with what? A gas. Let me give you some examples of this. This is one of the examples here. In this case here, the acid here is carrying a gas. The acid here is HCl, but it is carrying a gas, which is what? Ammonia. Class, are we together? By the time it combines with the base, calcium 2 hydroxide, these two will actually combine. Are you following me, class? To give you calcium two chloride plus what water neutralization reaction am i right then this ammonia will come out here as ammonia gas so we produce ammonia by reacting ammonia salt with the what a base class are we together now this is one case here the acid is on carrying a what a gas let me give you another example where the acid is carrying a gas another example is h2co3 this acid here is carrying a gas which is what co2 class are we together God bless you. Now, let me give you an example of a case where the base will be carrying a gas. An example of a situation or a typical paradigm of a situation. Uh, is CaOCl2. Two. This is some hydrate. This is your bleaching powder. I'm not interested in the water yet. This is your bleaching powder. The base here is CaO. It is carrying a gas, which is what? Cl2. Class, are you together? Are we together? So it will react with an acid here. It will react with a, an acid here or an acidic acid oxide, which is an anhydride, to give you salt and water together with chlorine gas. Take note of that. Let's go to the next question. Are we clear about this? Next question. A gas has that fuse twice as fast as Y under the same condition. Let us go. I want to know about this. A gas X that is as fast as Y. That is to say, X is equal to two times R Y. Class, are we together? Two times the speed of Y is what X. Are we together, class? Sorry, let me take it to be two R. Two times as that of Y. That means rate of the X. Will be what two arrow. Let me take that of y to be what arrow so that arrow x will be two times of that of y. Are we together? God bless you. Now they said, Where's the question again? If the relative molecular mass of x, mox, is equal to where in the 28, calculate the relative molecular mass of y. This question is testing us again on Graham's law of what diffusion. What I told you earlier. So we have square root of MOY over square root of what? MOX. What are our ROX here? 2R over ROY is what? R. Square root, what is the molar mass of Y? That's what we're looking for. Over, what is that of X? 28. Please, help me press. This cancel this. Therefore, square root of MOY will be equal to 2 root of what? 28. Are we together, class? Therefore, MOY will be equal to square both sides. That will give you 4 times 28. Am I good? Are we together? 4 times 28. 1, 1. Number 2. Number 17. The feet.
How did I get the two? Two arrow, arrow cancel arrow, I left the two here. Are we there? Cross multiply. You have this. Uh huh. Because two times this. The square both sides. Are we okay? Number 17. The filter in a cigarette produces the nicotine content by how? Is it burning? B, adoption. C, evaporation. And D, absorption. Absorption. It does not react with it. It removes it temporarily. Are you following me now? I didn't mean it react with it. That's absorption. But now it takes it temporarily. Absorption. Let's go. Number 18. Which of the following has an isomer? Is it C, 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 C? Is it C to A, C? <laughs> is it C for H10? Is it C to H4? Class, if you have a stone like this, write out the structure of all of them. This one is benzene, which is like this. You don't expect benzene to have an isomer, yes or yes. This one is two carbon, one, two, yes or yes. You don't expect this to have an isomer. This one is C double bond C, yes or yes. 18. You don't say, now this one, sorry, this one we have what? Azuma. One, two, three, four. Bring this one here. Yeah, thank you. Next question. When temporary hard water is boiled for some time in a kettle, the inner surface of the kettle becomes coated with a deposit of dash. Cash on what? Cash on what? Class, this is what is responsible for temporary hardness. Temporary hardness is caused by and magnesium hydrogen trisocarbonate. Now, when they are boiled, they will decompose to give you a white deposit of a white deposit of CaCO3 plus water plus CO2. No, the question is not asking you what causes temporary hardness. The question says, when a temporary hard water is boiled for some time, the inner surface of the kettle will become will become a deposit of this will be the deposit when you boil this is what is causing the soft water this is what will be deposited are we clear that's b yes 20 number 20. So, uh, are we good we are given an equation We are giving this is the last question I'll be solving for today. This is where I'm gonna stop for today. We are stopping number 20 of the other year because I'll be having class this year. Are we together? So I'll be stopping here for today. We are giving three moles of iron combining with four moles of water. So this should be a reversible reaction. We're talking about equilibrium to give you that. Try ion tetraoxide and four mole of hydrogen gas. They say we should write the equilibrium constant for this reaction. Class, let us go. Eh? Reactant, yes. Which is concentration of this. Abi? Raised to the power, nothing is here. Times concentration of hydrogen gas, raised to the power what? Four. All about concentration of this, raised to the power what? Three. Concentration of water, raised to the power what? Four. Which one is that? God bless you. This is what I'm going to be stopping for today. Ask me questions. Yes, now I've done it before. Now, biology students, as soon as I, I come back, we're going to be discussing biology over there. So that means when I once I come, I'll just come there to meet you guys. Are we okay? okay. Yeah.
That's all right. Come. Yes. Okay, go for Yes. Oh, there, Ah. 